Canada's Wonderland is one of my favorite amusement parks I have ever been to. The park is owned by Cedar Fair, so same people as Cedar Point, Knott's Berry Farm, Kings Island, you get the point. I got to check out this park in the summer of 2019 and spent multiple days there, which right off the bat, I would encourage more than one day at this park. But we'll talk more about that later. This video will encompass everything you need to know about Canada's flagship amusement park in case you have any interest in going. For starters, this park can be found in the province of Ontario in an outskirt of Toronto called Vaughan. It should be no more than 40 minutes from downtown Toronto and about an hour and a half if you're coming from Niagara Falls. Because I was in the middle of a Pennsylvania, Ohio coaster trip, I actually came from Erie, PA. This was about three and a half hours if I remember correctly, but what a well worth it drive because this park was so awesome. With this being my first and only park I've been to in Canada, there were some things that definitely screamed I'm in another country. An example is the usage of Canadian dollars. We were lucky enough to convert US dollars in advance, which made the purchase of food, beverage, merchandise, etc. much cheaper. They do accept US currency here, but they charge more, so I'd recommend just stopping on an ATM when you enter the country. Granted, many of you watching this may very well live in Canada, and so none of this should be a concern to you guys at all. Anyway, Anyways, once you drive up to this park, you are greeted by a killer skyline. You see all of these towering roller coasters defining the park's appearance, which is fitting given that they have the third most coasters of any park in the world. 17 screen machines call Canada's Wonderland home, but if you haven't been here before, you may be surprised to hear that that's actually the most controversial aspect of this park. I don't mean that as in they don't have some excellent coasters, but they have a lot of not so great ones making up the supporting lineup. Going down the list, the three coasters you'll want to make sure you go on for sure are the three built by Bollinger and Mabillard. The biggest and best attraction at this park is Leviathan, a speed demon of a giga coaster. This ride stands 306 feet tall and has some awesome elements and was a big reason I wanted to come here. Many coaster enthusiasts like to compare this ride to Fury 325 at Carowinds in North Carolina, which is a similar giga coaster. Unfortunately, these comparisons do knock Leviathan down a bit because it is much shorter and has less low to the ground sections. But looking at it by itself, Leviathan is a kick-ass ride and I'd recommend trying it in the front row for sure. My second favorite coaster here is Behemoth, a hyper coaster with a fun out and back layout. And actually, fun might be a bit of an understatement. I was pretty blown away by this ride's floater strength to the point where I decided and still do rank it higher than Mako at SeaWorld Orlando, a coaster that's closely compared to Behemoth all the time. This ride has some great drops, it travels over the water, and the color scheme is absolutely stunning in my opinion. The newest coaster at the park opened in 2019 and was a big draw for me to visit. This of course was Yukon Striker, the tallest, fastest, and longest dive coaster in the world. Now stats aside, I was a bit let down by this ride because the vest restraints restrict a lot of the airtime you'd receive otherwise. Though layout wise, I don't think they could have chosen better elements. The vertical drop is awesome even without the airtime of the other dive coasters, and the inversions are a combination of grace and intensity. After the top three, the coaster lineup dwindles out quite a bit. The general consensus is that Vortex, the park's old suspended coaster, is the next best thing. And actually, to be fair, this is a pretty fun ride. It opened in 1991 and has some really fun swooping turns complemented by its swaying vehicles. Though still, I tend to have different opinions for spots four and five at this park. I personally had a lot of fun on their two wooden coasters, Wildebeest and Mighty Canadian Mindbuster. The reason this is strange is because these are unanimously considered to be some of the roughest wooden coasters in the world. But I ended up with several rides on each and really didn't think they were rough at all. Wildebeest was built by Philadelphia Toboggan Coasters in 1981 and is reminiscent of Grizzly at King's Dominion in Virginia. Funny enough, Mighty Canadian Mindbuster was built by the same company in the same year, but offers a differing ride experience with its out and back series of elements. Now, I do think having two classic woodies aren't necessary, especially if they aren't loved by most. So what I'd like to see done is giving Wildebeest the RMC treatment. Rocky Mountain Construction is a company known for transforming old wooden coasters to smooth modern hybrid coasters, and it would be perfect for this park. If top tier coasters is something people want to see more of here, that is a great way to do it. After this, they have a decent Premier Rides family coaster. This is called Backlot Stunt Coaster. It has some okay theming, a pretty good layout, but doesn't strike me as a good enough filler coaster to hold up the whole lineup. After these seven is where the collection of coasters really starts to tumble down, and that's concerning when you have 10 more on offer. Bat is a Vacoma Boomerang, not a particularly bad one, but you can find these all over the place and most don't like them. Dragon Fire, not too far away, is an old aerodynamics looping coaster, which again is an okay ride, I just don't know why it's still here. It seems like maintenance costs would probably outweigh ridership. Flight Deck is a notorious Vacoma SLC, and I can confirm that it's pretty bad. Maybe not as bad as I was expecting, but it's not a pleasant coaster by any means. The same can definitely be said about its next door neighbor, Time Warp. This Vacoma Valeri coaster is atrocious. It has awful head restraints and you ride like you're trapped in a cage. I've now had the unfortunate opportunity of riding all three Valeri coasters in North America, and I think this is my least favorite one. Then Fly is a mock wild mouse coaster. Actually not a bad ride at all, but it's pretty mild and doesn't do a whole lot for me personally. A more unique family ride is Ghoster Coaster. This can be found in Planet Snoopy and is actually built from wood. It's not often that you see a small scale kitty wooden coaster like this. This is very similar to the Woodstock Express at the other Cedar Fair Park, so I actually enjoy this for what it was. Oh, and this one's weird. Wonder Mountain's Guardian is a hybrid dark ride and roller coaster. It has a lift hill and a couple shallow dips, but also 3D glasses and plenty of screens. I'm actually not much of a fan of Triotech's dark ride technology, but it does add variety to the lineup, so I can't complain. Plus, it has a surprise at the end that I'm not going to spoil, but it makes the ride worth doing. Other than that, there's a couple small family and kitty coasters, but that's pretty much it. 
it. I would really like to see this park take strides to improve their support and collection of coasters. As is, I think their top three is fantastic, and despite all being built by the same manufacturer, they complement each other really nicely. But if they could build RMC Wildebeest to take out a few of the really bad coasters, then suddenly things are looking much better at this park. So now that we can move on from the coasters, I'm able to say that this might be the only true complaint I have for this park. And they have so many good flat rides to make up for the losses. Some of these are very unique and can be only found at this park. My favorites were Sledgehammer, that was a weird one, and Skyhawk was an awesome Gerslauer flat ride as well. There's also a Windseeker, a Pendulum ride, you've got Riptide, and whatever this thing is. Rides aside, I want to just talk about the general park appearance for a second. From the second you enter the premises, it is absolutely beautiful. The main midway is made up of these fountains leading up to the centerpiece of the park, Wonder Mountain. The front of it has an iconic Canadian maple leaf and as a whole is a killer first impression. Though really, I wouldn't expect anything less from a Cedar Fair park as they're known to have really well-maintained and beautiful theme parks. Throughout Canada's Wonderland, you'll find sections with a bit of theming more than the other parks in the chain, lots of bodies of water, really nice landscaping, and the park is quite big too. I thought the appearance and scale of this place along with the atmosphere had a lot of resemblance to Cedar Point in Ohio. Some of my favorite sections were Medieval Fair. This is the most themed section of the park. It is where you'll find Leviathan. I also liked International Festival. It has some pretty good landscaping and rides everywhere you look. Oh, and this park's kids area is really well done. Well, let me rephrase that because I actually have two side by side. Planet Snoopy though is a reoccurring area throughout the Cedar Fair parks, but I'd argue this one is my favorite that I've been to so far. They have a fun dark ride here called Boo Blasters and a handful of small coasters and flat rides. I think this park nailed their appearance. I have absolutely no complaints there. They also have other pretty typical Cedar Fair qualities, good operations, good food, nice employees, and pretty much just good everything. I really think Atmosphere is one of this park's strong suits. It is such a nice park to just walk around and spend a couple days at. Now, if you're a roller coaster enthusiast and are coming here to pick up your 17 coaster credits, you're gonna need more than one day, especially if you're interested in the flat rides, shows, and oh yeah, they have a water park included with admission. I didn't actually ride anything in the water park, no one has splash works, but I did take a walk inside and saw some pretty cool slides that may be of interest for water park fans. With this much on offer, I just don't think it's possible to do everything in one day, especially because this is one of the highest attended parks out there. If you look at this report done by Business Insider, Canada's Wonderland is the highest attended seasonal amusement park in North America. Take it from a guy who spent two days here, both of which were quite busy, and even I wish I had longer. Unlike Cedar Point, this park doesn't have a resort atmosphere though, since there's no hotels or amenities on site. It's really just a massive traditional amusement park. So what we did is we settled with the hotel 15 minutes away, which did the job just fine, and we were back at the park the next morning. So to just kind of wrap things up, Canada's Wonderland is a park that I could not recommend more. On a scale from 1 through 10, it easily gets a 9 in my opinion. I just wish they could improve their supporting coaster cast, which is kind of important since most of you guys watching are coaster enthusiasts. But other than that, they do pretty much everything fantastic. So let me know what you think if you've been to this park before. If you haven't had the chance to visit, I'd be curious if it's on your bucket list or if you have plans to visit in the future. If you enjoyed today's video, I'd also appreciate it if you could leave a like and subscribe down below. Feel free to check out my Discord server that was created by a bunch of fans of the channel. A link will be in the description. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you very soon. Bye, guys.